normal distributions, otherwise known as a bell curve. I like this cat here. How does one represent the mean of the normal distribution? Mu. You know why that is? Remember what mean is? Um, let's actually write this down. We need to know this actually. So the mean, what is that? That's the average. That's true. But even better than that, uh, we can use this symbol x with a bar on top of it, or we can use this mu. That's why we say ha ha mu. Um, so let's actually talk about this so-called normal distribution here. So the way it's shaped, uh, sometimes it's called a bell curve, but uh, it basically goes something like, let's see if I can draw it nicely here. Yeah, it's not too bad. So what, what goes on these different axes here? This right here is some sort of frequency, usually, or some sort of thing like that. And this is some value x. This could be anything. Sometimes this is like, uh, you know, height of seedlings, or it could be, you know, shoe sizes, or it could be, you know, whatever you feel like measuring here, masses of something in a factory. The important thing is that you're measuring something here, some variable here, and you're measuring the frequencies so of how often it happens. And what's important is this. Um, right in the center, so by the way, as soon as you're told something is normally distributed, it means it has this sort of shape here that goes up. And what's important is that the middle point right here, this peak, that right there is the mean. So you can call it x bar or mu, that's the mean. Now we have this thing and it's symmetric about the mean, which means whatever it does to the left of the mean, it's the same thing as it does to the right of the mean. And this is the important part, I think, right here, is that what you do here with this, the whole point is to try to find the probability of finding some value between some two locations. And that we do with the area under the curve. So what we do is we would, we would take a piece of that curve, and if we could find that area under the curve, that's the probability of finding that object at that place. For example, if this was like, uh, I don't know, shoe sizes, then we could say, what's the probability of finding someone with a shoe size of greater than whatever? Then you could figure out the probability by doing the area under the curve. Now it sounds really complicated, but luckily there's a nice uh, calculator function that does everything for us. But I think it's a really nice idea to understand a little bit about the main variables here. So first of all, there was that the mean is uh, the average, that's really important. The other one is that we have this thing called sigma. It has this Greek signal, uh, symbol here. This is a Greek lowercase letter, you know, sort of sigma. One of my students said it looks like a whistle, sort of blowing on a whistle. I was like, yeah, okay, sure. So this is called standard deviation. And this tells us the spread of the data. What does that mean? It means that uh, how far away is the data located from the mean? So for example, here, uh, and maybe we all uh, label the these values here. So this one right here, it turns out where it's sort of curving downwards, then where it starts to curve up, it's exactly in the middle. So this right here, for example, this distance right here, that's sigma. So is this distance here. If we want to actually name this, like actually call this, you see this is the mean, so this will be plus sigma. That's why I call it mean plus one sigma. This is the mean minus one sigma. And then what we could do, of course, we could take, you know, two times sigma we could do and so on right so we could do two times sigma and we could do the mean plus two times sigma and the important thing is that we actually know something kind of special here turns out we know this area right here so within one times this standard deviation so from one behind to one above we know that this is 68%. In other words, it's 0.68. And we know that two standard deviations across the mean like this, this is about 95%. It's not precisely this, but it's very close to these numbers here. So it's about 68 or 95%. All right. What does it mean to have a large standard deviation versus a small standard deviation? That might be interesting. So what if I try to draw something that has a large standard deviation? So I'll draw something like this right here like that. It still has a mean here. Now what I'm going to do, try to do is show you by contrast something that has a small standard deviation. So like, maybe like, like that. The idea was to show you that they still have the same mean. They still have the same mean value here. It's just that one of them, they're more spread out. 
So this right here, the sigma is very, very large. If the sigma is very, very small, then they're, they're found very close to the mean. So this mean, uh, so this sigma really tells you the spread of the data. All right, so how do we use our calculator for this? By the way, I like this normal distribution, paranormal. <laughs> so if we're going to use our calculator for normal distributions, that might be something that's helpful to know. So uh, this helps if you know the minimum value and the maximum value, and you know the mean and the standard deviations, then it gives you the probability. This is the idea behind it. So when you know these things, you use this function. And this function is called normal CDF. That is the key thing here. Normal CDF. CDF stands for cumulative distribution function. So this here is some sort of function here. You're going to have to tell it the min, you're going to have to tell it the maximum value, you're going to have to tell it the mean and the standard deviation. This is what you'll, you'll need to do. Okay. So what that really does for you is that given some sort of data here, so let's just say it's some data here, and let's just say this here is the mean right here. Let's just say you want to know like what's the probability of finding something from here to here, for example. This would be the min, this would be the max. So if you're told these, if you're told like this is the minimum value, this is the maximum, and you're told the mean and the standard deviation, you can use your calculator to tell you the area under this curve. In other words, the probability of finding this thing there. So how do you do this? Well, what you do is you go to your trusty calculator. Remember, I'm writing the code sort of the I'm showing you how to do it with the TI Inspire, but you can do this with the other calculators as well. They have similar named functions. Uh, so I'm going to do it with my trusty calculator here. I just need to get it. Here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new calculator page. So I do new page and I do calculator. And then I go to menu. That's where you always go for things. I'm trying to do some statistics. So I press that. And then I'm looking for a statistical distribution because it's a um, normal CDF here. So I'm going to go find it here, I hope. For some reason, it's not giving me enough room. There we go. What happened here? Try it again. There we go. I need normal CDF. There it is. And then it asks me for my lower bound, upper bound, mean, standard deviation. You put that stuff in, you press OK, and you get an answer. That's it. That's how you do it. Another calculator is a slightly different ways of calling those functions up, but that's the idea behind it.